The first year I kind of went, got into it for the first six, four months sort of thing, but now I just, I just don't really get into classes and that. To top it off, Harry Westrup has just received some bad news okay. from Australia that will impact on both Pete and Jeremy. We've just had to um, abandon our, our visit to Australia as, um, as a team. Unfortunately for, for Melbourne and some of the other teams that we were about to play, they were all involved in the NRL finals and it just wasn't, um, wasn't suitable for them for us to tour at this time of the year. They were gutted, and to this day they're, they're gutted. I believe they deserved the trip. They worked hard this year. They got some, uh, some good results, and, um, and I'm sure they would have done extremely well over there, but it would have been a nice way to finish the year off because um, it's been a pretty intense season. It would have been a nice way to finish it off on a, a good, hard rugby trip. When he came home and told me about them not going to Australia, you know, because Jeremy's a very closed book, he, he doesn't say much, but I, I could see that the disappointment of him not being able to go and a letdown, you know, another letdown um, in his life, which I guess it was like that for, for all the boys. Everyone was looking forward to it. It was a bit of a bummer. In stark contrast, Peter seems to have taken the same setbacks in his stride. He's still focused, diligent and positive. He's buzzed to go to school is like... You know, number one priority, just waking up every morning, just having a smile on my face, going to school, seeing the same people, saying hi and stuff, and just being there is just real awesome. Just like, yeah. His mum has noticed big changes at home too. Before, oh, I have to ask Peter to make me a cup of tea or do the washing the dishes or do the washing or tidy up his room, but now, I don't have to do all that. Peter has, you know, clean his own room, do his own washing and wash the dishes too. And he makes the other ones, um, you know, do the work and that sort of thing. Even tidy up the house. Okay. Dallas, despite the long hours she's put in, still thinks she could have tried harder. My only regret is not trying as hard as I could have. I mean, I thought at the beginning of the year that I would, um, you know, be real onto it and all that, but <laughs> but I have been slack in some areas, and um, but I'm improving. I'm trying to improve that. Yeah. Christ's College is probably the most prestigious private school in the country. Beating them really matters, and the East Side boys and their supporters have travelled across town for a match that can put Aranui in the Schoolboy First 15 Grand Final. Players, staff and families reflect the tension felt in every pass and tackle. I can't say, man, you know, I'm too happy for these boys, you know. It's third, third time in a row, man, all these boys, you know. Glad to have all my brothers, sisters, all these people out here, you know. All in here, man, I all love them, I all love these people, man. Yeah, you know, I just, just want to cry, man, just, but not in the camera, you know, sweet yeah. ass, sweet ass. Mission accomplished. They're in the grand final. It's the final training run for the first 15 as they count down to their grand final game against Christchurch Boys High. We've got to hit and they've got to stay hit. But this is it, the last training run. Make it, play it like it's the last training run of the year. This is it. No more second chances. Oh, that is pathetic.
While Jeremy has returned to training hard for the big match, his league heroes across the Tasman, Melbourne Storm, have just won the NRL Grand Final. Their win means they're now free to trial some Aranui students early in the new year. Jeremy and Pete's trip is on again. And win the Premiership. We'll be back right after this. Back in Christchurch, it's finals day at Rugby Park. The boys' game is preceded by Cherie's Aranui girls' team. The Aranui girls win decisively, helped considerably by Cherie's three tries. So the stage is set for an Aranui clean sweep of the city's school rugby championship. If the Huckers are any indication, there'll be plenty of passion in the game and Aranui's winning record will continue. Jeremy gets them off to a promising start with a sparkling solo try. Everybody talks about our uh, rugby success or our rugby league success. It's not about that. If you want to talk about success at Aranui, talk about the student that comes out the other end. But they'd underestimated the resolve and talent of the opposition, and the season's end becomes a bit of an anti-climax. Lots of times, um, you know, like your back's against the wall and things aren't going so, so good, but you want to really stick in there with your mates and hang in there. If you're going to go down, you're going to go down together. Do we all learn to live as one? Oh. You just got to understand, it's not about winning the football game either. It's not, it's, it's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about people. We're talking about when the pressure went on, some of them weren't up to it. We're talking about like uh, why weren't they up to it? And what are they going to be out in the big world like, you know, in, out in the workforce? Are they going to go belly up when the going gets tough? Are they going to dig their toes in and see the bad days through? <laughs> Suddenly the rugby season's over and the end of the school year's being celebrated at a formal prize giving. So tonight we're celebrating that you're graduating and moving on and we wish you well and hope you're successful. We've at least given uh, the country, I think, another angle and another approach to some kids in schools. You've got to remember that at this school we've got probably near 1,200 students. And for many of them, they're doing a very traditional, standard sort of school, uh, school diet. But for the ones who can't cope with that, who fall by the wayside, we've created a, another stream that, uh, that meets their needs. And from a dark history of truancy and antisocial behaviour, two of our featured students exit this year with flying colours. This is our number one trophy. We call it our number one trophy. It means that these people or a person, is, it is joint this year, it, is, uh, it means you're the, being the number one person for the whole year. To me, these people are huge success, and I'm very, very proud of them. This year it's joint. It goes to uh, a lady that I have. She has so much talent. I just really hope she realises it. Cherie Irwin, you can come up here, please. This guy, um, he's, he's the man. He's, he's awesome. He's, uh, when I first heard about this person, I thought, oh my God, what are we in for? And he's just come on and leaps and bounds, and he's got a big future in wherever he goes as well. Peter Arce, you're the man. Peter arrived late at the function and stunned everyone with his shaved head, new clothes, and praise for the school. Of course, I'd like to thank Hoons. You know, it's been a really um, amazing two years that I've had here in the academy. Um, I'd like to thank all the friends that I've made here in the last two years, um, especially. You know, um, yeah. 
thanks a lot, eh? Because, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'd just uh, like to thank uh, everybody around me, you know, just, uh, my boys, sisters, you know, all my brothers and that, all, you know, it's all primo and stuff, and uh, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone, you know, all the teachers, and uh, two words, suck it. <laughs> Pretty sweet, you know, yeah, didn't know I'd get it, but just, yeah. It was so, uh, I was, it was so hard not to cry tonight, it was so hard. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Jeremy's future hangs on hopes of a league contract. He's undecided on whether he'll be returning to school. Nah. Nah. Definitely not. Actually, nah, I'm not too sure. But, yeah, I'm just see what happens. Dallas knows she's grown up this year and she's amazed at the value of a second chance at education. Anything's possible, you go for it and it's there, you know, you just have to grab it. It's, everything's there at, you know, your fingertips. Yeah. Happy to be a dropout two years ago, Peter now sees education as the key to getting employed. Just like hear like things from like, um, like from history and stuff and like, I don't want to go like and go get a job and I like, got nothing on my uh, application and stuff like that. I just want some qualifications just to get through to a job or something. Yeah. For Cherie, it's about feeling empowered. She knows the academy has made her believe she can have choices in life. It's been the best time of my life, you know. It's made me turn around, think about where I want to go, what I want to do. It's made me more motivational. I have more, I'm more motivated now. I'm more determined to what I want to be, what I want to do in my life, and it's made me in charge of my life. You know, instead of other people saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that, I, I'm telling me what I should do and why I should do it, which is, you know, the best thing in the whole world. All I'd like to